Well, praise God. Good evening and good morning to some. Go online. I'm going to begin to read to you from the Word of God. Oh, praise God. 1 Peter 5. Hmm. 1 Peter 5. Humility and faith. I'm just going to read to you a little bit tonight. Something for you to sleep on. And something for some of you to start the day. Humility and faith. 1 Peter. 1 Peter, the Apostle Peter. 1 Peter 5, chapter 5. Read from the Passion Translation. Word of the Lord to you. Starting at verse 6. Now this is conditional. Now the Word of God has many, many promises. Many, many promises in it. But many of, many of the promises of the Lord are conditional. Not automatic. They're conditional. He says here, Peter says, he says, if, if, that word, now sometimes it, if can be a, a badge of doubt. But here, it's a conditional phrase. If you bow low in God's awesome presence. Oh, and His presence, believe me, is awesome. The fear of the Lord, many people in, misinterpret that word, fear of the Lord. It actually means in the, in the original language, the awesome the awesome reverent, reverent causes you to be aware of your, of your smallness in the presence of the awesome and the mighty creator of the universe. He that made heaven and earth. He that upholds all things by his word. If you come into the presence of God, the Lord wants you to be in His presence. He's in you. If you're born from above, He's in you. Don't have to call God down. He's in you. First John 4, 4 says, Greater is He. He's talking about the Holy Spirit, which is God. The Holy Spirit. Greater is He that is within you than He that is in the world. That means the, the devil, the adversary. The one that gives us so many problems. Unfortunately, the one that so much focus gets placed upon. And the Lord says, take your eyes off of the circumstances. Take your eyes off what the enemy is doing. And place your eyes on me. Not me. I'm not talking about Richard. I'm talking about the Most High God. El Shaddai. The Most High God. He said, if you will bow low, bow low. Now that can be, you can position you can get down on your knees before Him. But He's talking about bow, bow low in your heart, in your spirit. Don't be caught up in loftiness of your spirit. If you bow low in God's awesome presence, He, He, personally, He, will eventually exalt you. He will eventually. That means there's time involved. The times are in His hands. They're not in yours. Yours is to bow low in your heart. To humble yourself. To forget about trying to work things out yourself. Or how things are going to work out your, by your own power or by your own might. He will eventually exalt you as you leave the timing in His hands. I hear the Lord saying the timing. Timing is critical. You need to listen in your spirit to the timing of the Lord. There are times to do things. There's times to not do things. But that doesn't mean just to be idle. It means to be 
aware of what he is doing. And then when he speaks, act. When he speaks, act. There's a time to act. There's a time to listen to his voice. But when you hear his voice, then it's the time to act. If you'll leave the timing in his hands. He says, pour out. This is another thing. Here's another conditional thing. Pour out. Pour out. Just pour them out to the Lord. Pour out all your worries and your stress upon Him. Don't pour them out on your wife. Don't pour them out on your pastor. Don't pour them out on your, uh, the people at work. That, that'll just cause faith to, fight, to diminish in them. Take a stand. Take a stand of faith that the Lord says He's going to exalt you. That doesn't, mean, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to make you a world famous evangelist or preacher or multimillionaire. But he will exalt you. That means he will cause you to rise above the circumstances of life. The circumstances that are trying to weigh you down at this moment. The, the, the circumstances that are trying to oppress your body right now. Not only believe it, but begin to decree it. It's your job to decree it. It's his job to perform it. You can't tell God what to do, but you can take what his word has said, what his written word has said, what he's spoken into your heart by the Holy Spirit, and begin to decree it, and then leave it up to him. Pour out all your worries, your stress upon him, and leave them. Leave them. I talked about this just the other night, but I'm, I'm, it's, it's on my heart. He said, leave them there. Quit picking them up. Quit picking them up. It's a, it's a battle for some of us. It's a battle for all of us to leave things alone. Leave the things that we've given into the hands of, of the Most High God, of the Most Powerful Being. That's in the universe who created heaven and earth. You need to realize that. You are his creation. But not only are you his creation, but if you're his sons and your daughter you're his sons and you're his daughters. And surely if an earthly father would take care of their children, if an earthly mother would take care of their child, how much more so the father in whom all the family of the earth is called Father will take care of you. He, for, because, why? For he always tenderly cares for you. I hear some of us say, well, he don't care about me. If he cared about me, he wouldn't let this be happening to me. No, that's not true. The word of God's true. He says he always tenderly cares for you. He tenderly cares for you. He's not rough on you. The devil's rough on you. People are rough on you, but the Lord tenderly, I want to hear, I want to, I want to say that again, tenderly, tenderly cares. He cares for you. Be well balanced. Be well balanced. Don't go, don't go off on tangents. Don't go off half cocked. It's an old expression, old military term. Don't go off half cock. Be prepared. Be well balanced in your life. Don't get off on one side of the ditch or the other. Be well balanced. And well balanced doesn't mean to be balanced faith with unbelief. It means to be well balanced in the Word of God and your understanding of the Word of God and the understanding of the character and the nature. The Word of God says that Moses knew God's ways. He knew what Yahweh's ways. He knew His ways. The people saw His acts. But Moses knew His ways. The Lord says, I want you to know my ways, the way I operate. You've seen my acts. You've seen my, my mighty works. You've seen my signs and my wonders. But I want you to begin to know my ways. Because for as you, you know my ways... You know me. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and I am the life. So knowing Jesus, knowing the way Jesus operates is the, the way 
the Father operates. Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. What are you saying? I'm an expression, a living expression of the invisible Father. Be well balanced and always, always alert. Be alert. Don't be caught off guard. That's why it's necessary for you to spend time in the presence of God. Not be caught up in the world. Not be caught up in things. So many things. There's nothing wrong with having fun. I have fun. I'm a great laugher. I'm a great joy, joyful person. But be alert. Be alert. Because Why? Because your enemy, and I'm reading from Peter now, because your enemy, the devil, the adversary, roams around. He roams around. He stalks around incessantly. In other words, that's all he's got to do is to roam around incessantly like a roaring lion. Now, I want you to, know, I want you to take, take note of this. It says like a roaring lion. He tries to imitate God. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. The tribe of praise. The devil is not. The devil always tries to mimic anything God does. He tries to mimic. He tries to convince you that, that he's, he's in charge of your life, but he's not. When you made Jesus Lord of your life, that's exactly what you did. You made him Lord of your life. He is Lord of your life. He is the, Jesus is the, Lion of the tribe of Judah. The devil's not. He roams around like a, ro a roaring lion. But he's looking for its prey. He's looking for someone to prey upon to devour. He's looking for that. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm going to embolden you. I want to. Uh, you, you, want, you don't need to be ignorant of, of the ways of the enemy. Paul said that. He said, listen, this is what he says. This is his advice. I'm going to try, I'm trying, I'm trying as fast as I can to get this to you. He said, take a decisive, take a decisive stand against him and his every attack. Take a decisive stand against him. That means you make, you've got, that's up to you to make a decision that you're going to stand. And you, it's up to you. You have a free will to take a decisive stand against him, against the enemy, against the enemies of your life, where sickness, disease, lack, people talking about you, people trying to do things to you. You know, the, you know, the enemy, God, the Lord has, uses people to flow his love, his grace, his mercy, his power through. But the enemy uses people to flow the opposite through. See, so take a decisive stand, not against people. A war is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and wickedness in the heavenly places. Talking about spiritual things. He said, take a decisive stand against him and resist his every attack. Resist his every attack. With strong, listen, with strong and vigorous faith. For strong, with strong and vigorous faith. For you know that your believing brothers and sisters around you, around the world, are experiencing the same kinds of troubles that you endure. That's the next word. You're not in this by yourself. You're not the only one that's having attacks against you. <clears throat> it's happened all over the world. Peter wrote this thousands of years ago. If it, was, if it was true then, it's true now. But the Lord says, he said, take a decisive stand. The word of the Lord to you, take a decisive stand. Make it up in your mind right now. The enemy is not going to take you down. Say it out of your mouth. If you really believe this, say it out of your mouth. Make a decree. The devil is not going to take me down. The devil is not going to have my family. The devil is not going to have my finances. 
The devil is not going to have my health. Take your hands off. The devil, take your hands off my, my body right now. I decree and declare pains go. I decree and declare cancers go. Decree, yes, oh yeah, oh no. Cancer's not the big boogeyman. It's just a disease. Just a spirit. It's real. But it, take a decisive stand in faith. Faith is, believe it in your heart. Believe the word of God in your heart. And decree it with your mouth. Now, it doesn't do you any good to, to decree with your mouth if you don't believe it in your heart. So if you're not believing in your heart, get in the word of God. Meditate in the word of God. Read the word of God. Speak the Word of God until you believe it. And then when you believe it and decree it, you'll see it come to pass. When you believe it and you decree it, it will come to pass. That's the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not my words. Find it in the book of Mark. If you believe in your heart, you confess it with your mouth. He said, you can speak to mountains and they'll move. And the mountains in your life right now, they need moving. Don't beg God to move them. He says, Has it, have his faith. He's given you, he's given you his faith through his word. You speak, to the, you speak to your mountain right now. You speak to your mountain right now. Don't complain about your mountain. Don't describe your mountain. Don't tell other people about your mountain. Tell, your, tell yourself. Tell the devil and tell the people around you that the mountain is moving. The mountain is moving, for the Lord's moving the mountain. Because I'm speaking words of faith, and that my faith shall not fail. And I believe that the words that I speak, that I believe, will come to pass. Will come to pass. And I receive it now. Strong. So I encourage you right now, with strong and vigorous faith, decree. Take your decisive stand. Make your decision now. Don't put it off till tomorrow. I've heard people say this, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to wait. You know, I'm going to wait till the time's right. Now, I'm telling you right now, today is the day. Don't harden your heart. Today's the day. Make the decisive decree. That Jesus is the Lord of your life. If you're already born again, He's already your Lord, but begin to decree and declare He's Lord. He's got the last and the final say. It's, 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 it was written in the Word of God in the book of Hebrews that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's, he's the one that designed your life planned it out he's uh, he's the only one worthy to open the book of your life and begin to cause that 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 plan that purpose that he he had before the foundation of the world for you he's the only he's the only one worthy to open that book and begin to and begin to let that book unfold in your life for the word of the lord is your the 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 book is, is beginning to unfold in your life. It's the only thing, if, if it's not unfolding, it's because you've not made the decision that you're going to do what the Lord's told you to do. You're going to do it by the grace of God. You're not going to do it in your own power. That's why it says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That means depend, trust on His grace. Trust on the, the power. Grace is the power of God to do what you know that you have to do, but you don't have the ability in yourself to do. But the Lord's merciful to you. Mercy is coming down in the, in the mercy of the Lord and His grace empowers you to do that which He's called you to do. There are ministries God's called you to do. There's, there's, there's people God's called, the Lord's called you to touch their lives, to pray. Pray for them, to, to lay your hands on them, to bring life to them, to speak words of encouragement to them. So I want to encourage you tonight. I just had to get up. I got up. I was, I was doing something. I was prompted of the Lord to come in here and speak to you. I'm speaking to somebody. Somebody out there needs this. Somebody needs this, and you receive it. So just say, I receive it, Lord. I don't know if this, this man, you know, I don't know him. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm here to tell you, the Lord says, 
He said, your time's coming. Your time's coming. Your time's coming. You're about to rise up out of that place. You're about to rise out and make a transition in your life. And it's not for evil, it's for good. For the Lord says, I've not intended evil for your life, but I've intended good for your life and I've intended blessing. But I'm waiting for you to make the decision to pour all the cares and the worries over on Him and be carefree. You can actually be carefree for the rest of your life. It doesn't mean you just lay around on the couch and watch TV. It means you, but you don't have to worry. You do not have to worry. Worry is a sin. Repent of it. Ask the Lord to forgive you and He'll forgive you. He's already, he's already provided forgiveness for you. So receive that right now in the name of Jesus and, and begin to step out in faith. Start with your mouth. Start with the actions. And make the decision tonight that Jesus really is Lord of your life. He's a good Lord. For the Lord's good. And his mercy endures forever. So that's all I had to say for you tonight. I'm off to bed. Good night. God bless you. May the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And give you peace. May his grace increase in your life a hundredfold. To the fullest extent that you'll allow him to. In Jesus' name, thank you and good night. God bless you.